I need one of them little movie boards. One of them little movie boards I do where you just uh, you just write the you write the scene number and the and the how you doing because you know I switch cameras so often that sometimes it's confusing, especially since it categorizes them completely different since they're recorded in different formats. This is like I don't know what this is, and the Sony is like H or XASC or whatever, I don't know what it is, S -S -S -A -C. You always get these envelopes, important information enclosed. Well, that actually was important information. It never is. That time it was. A little bit of way too much diesel. I'm gonna count a lot of frig knot. Hot flame. What are you doing, kitten? I think I have just about everything I need in there. Actually, yep, I think I already brought everything in. I'm burn this stuff up, I can go inside and start to as quietly as I can work on. Ceiling. I ought to go steal all the freaking Trump signs that are still up, <laughs> even though it's way past like because these triggered fucking snowflakes can't accept reality. Yeah, I ought to go do that and uh, throw them in this here fire where they where they belong. But I'll resist the temptation today anyway. Definitely gonna be cramped in the closet. See, I'm gonna try to hit the vacuum up first and try to get all the little hanging, hanging bits. And then, uh, yeah, go to work here. making today. Some of y'all may not be aware, uh, but my kitchen is in the process of being remodeled. Ergo the uh, taped up wall 
and the electrical cord coming through. I uh, got a big wind, windy, windy day today, and uh, I have not I have not filled in. That used to be a vent for the former hood. The new hood is ventless, so that wall's got to be sealed up. It has been sealed up from the outside, but I've still got to put a piece of sheetrock in and drywall it. Have you and uh, dry put patch it? You know, seal it, mud it, tape it, whatever. You know what it's called. And then uh, hang the hood. So that's what's going on there. So just ignore all that. And you know, it's beautiful aesthetics. So the first thing I like to do is bacon. And I like to do it with scissors because it just seems like it's the easiest. And uh, you want about a pound of bacon. I mean, at least I want about a pound of bacon. I'm not sure how much bacon you want, but I want about a pound of bacon. And uh, I usually just take a slice, I slice it in half, and then I slice these halves into a, you know, whatever, half inch, half inch cuts. Probably about time I gave my scissors a cut again. If your bacon is actually slightly frozen, it makes it easier. Just ever so slightly. Like if you've taken it out of the freezer, if you just wait till it's not quite, not quite uh, defrosted, then it cuts a lot easier. And it also cuts a lot easier if you actually sharpen your scissors once in a while. But I have neglected to do that as of late. But we'll struggle through it nonetheless. You know what? I didn't struggle through. It was, uh, they're too dull. So I'm about to start, I'm about to sharpen this. I've actually never used this. I bought this like a year and a half ago. Maybe not quite that long. And it's literally just been sitting in the, uh, in the how you doing zone. Let's see if I can get you a little bit better angle here bit better of the angular. I just watched video apparently you just put it in a little thing and make sure the blade's perpendicular to the belt and then start it and stop the uh, stop the blade on the tip. Ooh, I just touched it I can already feel it sharp. little bit difficult with scissors seems to be a little bit difficult with scissors because uh, you know you gotta kind of manipulate the position but let's see if we have better luck now oh yes oh that's what scissors do I remember now I remember that's what scissors do I think I paid $50 for that work sharp that is definitely worth it probably could get these just about razor sharp Get them cutting through chicken bone again like they used to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's nice. Very nice. I mean again, bacon ain't the loveliest. Bacon is not the loveliest thing to try to cut through. And that's what helps it. That's why it's better when it's uh, slightly frozen because you don't get up all that build up of fat on the blades which immediately starts to uh, make the scissors not perform as well as they otherwise would. I mean, I don't know the actual science behind it, it's just my personal experience. Yeah, wiping off makes a difference. Okay, well after totally, uh, after totally sharpening every knife I own and making it super sharp, I'll now get, back to, now get back to soup cooking, I will. Oh no, oh that's good. You're good, bud. That's a good sign. Now I just got a screw just apparently not even in one of these things. That's a great sign. Oh yeah, that's just... That was clearly from something inside. It's not just... It fell inside that hole and now it's just, it's just rattling around in there. This may not be as good as the Pampered Chef one I had years ago. I think it was a Pampered Chef. I don't know what kind it was, but anyway, I had one for years. I left it in California. Recently bought this one because it's the, it looks like it's the best one. I mean, there, there's a bunch of knockoffs, but this was, uh, this looked like it was the best. Okay, I think we're about to be in business.
potatoes too small, I'll just leave it bigger. Because you're gonna, you'll end up mashing about half the potatoes uh, at the end of the process. Because you know you don't want just chunks of potatoes. You need some. See, that's why that's covered with a towel because that's not a countertop that's just a board because the countertop like that is curing with epoxy and when that's done that'll go down and then I'll take that counter back and I'll do that one and then we won't be cooking anything but pizza for a week <laughs> I'm not gonna have a counter for at least a week but then after that I can finally attach the sink and oh glory days glorious glorious days all right actual potato amounts um, not really sure uh, I think the original recipe that I based this off of, I think it called for, I think it called for eight to ten potatoes. Uh, which would have been fine if they're like giant baking potatoes probably. But you know, if you make the recipe a couple times, you'll discover whether or not you have enough potatoes. Uh, okay, and we will also be needing some garlic and some onion. Some garlic and some onion, the will. And uh, you can use a yellow onion if you want. I use white. You know, big, small, whatever you like, right? How much onion you want? And garlic. We'll need garlic. I think the original recipe called for about three cloves. I use um, four, five, six. I don't know. We'll also need cilantro and tarragon if you have it. And obviously chives. For the end, you know, preferably for the garnish, I actually forgot to buy chives, but luckily I have some dried ones in the cabinet, so. You ever notice how some onions are harder to peel than others? I had hard when I did. Yes, I used a paring knife for all of that. You hush your mouth. Okay, so chop your onions. Thusly. Not diced. Chopped. How you doing? And then you can uh, you peel your garlic or, you know, squeeze it. Or flatten it with a knife. I'm going to mince it. If you don't have a mince it, if you don't have a mince it, if you don't have a mincer, then you need to chop it up. And even if you do have a mincer, you need to cut off your bad spots if you have any. Thusly. Break the skin. Start the bacon. If you're forgetful like me and you would prefer for your bacon not to be Cajun, uh, at least half of it, then uh, set a timer to remind you to stir every couple of minutes. And see, that's why it's kind of, uh, kind of subjective, right? Because onions always come in different sizes. And, you know, like every one of those cloves of garlic is a different size. So, you know, I guess if you had three giant ones, it'd probably be all right. Like two of those are tiny, one of them is medium, and two of them are semi-large. So, you know, it's all individual taste, right? Okay, when your bacon's done, remove it from the pan. This is actually probably when it's better to not have a Dutch oven. Because it's too heavy for me to lift on my own and try to drain and... I mean, I guess if I had proper apparatus... Oh, I'd burn myself. But I usually hold the Dutch oven and have the wife scrape all the bacon out into a drain pan so I can collect the grease, because you need the grease. It's the easiest way I know how to do it. One fourth. You need a quarter cup of the grease.
put your put your grease back in the pan, your quarter cup, and then you put your celery and your onions in. And I know right now you're like, oh, dude, you didn't say anything about celery or you didn't do anything with celery or did you just not show us that? No, we don't do celery because the wife doesn't like it. If it was up to me, I'd put celery in there. I mean, maybe I would. I'd try it at least once and maybe I wouldn't like it too. The point being, I never actually had it with celery because the old lady would not allow that to happen. Okay, we'll get those onions in that grease and saute them for about five minutes. And keep them moving. You know, every once in a word so you don't burn them. You basically want to cook them till, you know, they start to go translucent. And I just turned my oven up to about four and a half. So not quite medium, but it was slightly, slightly lower this entire time. And one must resist the urge to, to just spoon handfuls of crunchy, delicious bacon into one's mouth. Although, I may or may not have done so on occasion. Not resisted, that is. Okay, once your onions go yeah. once your onions go translucent, you're gonna you're gonna add your garlic. Okay, and you're going to go another couple minutes. One to two. Now I've tried several different potato soup recipes over the years, and most of them are pretty similar. Um, the biggest difference I've ever found is trying to use uh, Yukon Gold potatoes if you can. These aren't Yukon Gold because I couldn't find any. These are yellow Idaho's. These are Idaho yellow potatoes, but Yukon Gold has the uh, correct amount of starch. If you use just a regular baked potato, you're going to get a really starchy soup that can be really, uh, you know, almost gummy. Especially if you, uh, when you, when you add your thickener agent later on in the process, that you know you can really, you can, you can really gum up the work, so to speak. Okay, then we're going to add our potatoes. And you want to gently coat them with the oils and the onions and the garlic and saute for about four minutes. I probably should have might use a little bit more bacon grease since I'm kind of since I increased my potatoes a little bit. But I mean even according to the recipe I'm still using a little bit more potatoes than, than it's called for. Of course maybe that recipe maybe you know they don't call for Yukon gold so if you're using regular potatoes it could be way too starchy if you use more. You just you don't want to break up your potatoes or chunk them up or mash them or mess them up. You just you gently gently toss them about and just saute them. Okay. Then when that's up, that time's up, you're gonna put your bacon back in. Put your bacon back in the pan. And then you're gonna get some chicken broth. And uh, add just enough to cover the potatoes. Depending on how many potatoes you used, it could be probably at least four cups. Probably gonna be more. Gonna be more in my case anyway. Yeah, gonna, gonna be more. Yep, just pour it right over your hand. As long as your hands are clean, that shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, you just want enough to cover the potatoes, which shit is gonna be every little bit I have. If you want, you can give it a little quick stir. Then you're gonna put your gonna put your lid on. 
and you're going to simmer until the potatoes are tender. Put it on your temperature anywhere from 30 to 30 to 45 minutes or so, maybe 20 minutes. I don't know. Just check your tapes. Just check them. Stick them with a toothpick. Stick them with a fork. See if they're soft. If they are, we'll move on to the next step. Oh my goodness, have I had adventures. Uh, my potatoes aren't tender yet because I had to go. So just as soon as I shut the camera off, after I put these on, uh, I had to go. So I took them off heat before they even had a chance to simmer at all. And just, uh, and they've been sitting over here, so. Still smells good. All right. So I go, uh, where are we at here? Hopefully I'm in frame. So. Breaker, bad. Breaker, good. Yay, got a replacement. I've been meaning to do this for a couple weeks. Had the opportunity since I was going to the big town tonight. Uh, got my 4x4 Dorman switch in the mail, so scores on that because I've been waiting on that. And when I say I've been waiting on that, I mean I've been waiting to purchase that like since I've owned the vehicle. I mean I needed it like about a month after I bought the vehicle, or I didn't buy the vehicle. My stepmother gave it to me. But a month after that, step, that vehicle was given to me, that switch broke. I don't know, it might have been a year, whatever. My point is, I did a replacement for about 10 years. Finally broke down and did it because the inside chip pieces started to fall apart. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I didn't mess anything up. Hopefully this, this thing still works. Uh, and I was at a, I'm almost out of tequila. I was almost out of tequila, which is dire straits, right? So, and this is, this is what I drink, you know, used to drink that Patron, but that got too expensive. And this is almost just as good. If you're mixing it, you can't tell the difference. It is just as good. Clean. I don't get a hangover. Liquor store out. Second liquor store out. I'm like, well, I'm about to go to the big town and I don't, you know, I don't know what the pattern is going to continue. So I'm like, what's your next smallest size down from the 1.75 liter? Oh, it's a 700 mil. How much is that? Like 30, 33 bucks, 32.99. I'm like, that's a, that's expensive. Cause I pay 40 something for these big ones, like 47 for these big ones. So for $12 more, I can get more than twice the, the amount, more than twice the volume. And, uh, but no, no, I got it on reserve just in case. And then I go to the big town, uh, and after I get that, after I get my, uh, my, uh, my breaker there, I'm like, take me to the closest liquor store. There's one like a mile away called discount liquor. Who knew? $39, like almost $10 less than I'd normally pay for them. So I went ahead and stocked up and got three of them. And then on the way back, I stocked up on cherries because I was almost out. But the big news and the whole reason I had to leave all together is because this is my super old Mr. Coffee Frappadappa machine. And I've uh, been using it for years. And it works great. It makes good coffee. It cost me like 50 bucks. Matter of fact, once I dug it out of storage, because I was using it, and then when the kitchen fell apart, I stopped using it, and it was buried in a room. And when I rearranged the rooms to start in the old lady's art room, I found it, cleaned it, and started using that again. But in the meantime, I had purchased this Technovorm Mocha Master, which is a super, super badass $300 top of the line. How you doing? Just regular old coffee maker. I mean, not regular old, but regular old for, for super duper. And But that's why it's covered up with a towel, because I don't even use it anymore. Because I'd rather just make a fresh cup of joe at a time. And as you can see, all my stuff from my fresh cups of joe all day. Like that's got a little bit of milk in it. And that was my coffee cup. And that's the rinse thing that I have to use to rinse out. To rinse out this action. Because here's the, uh, not the best, not the best uh, setup. Like a little plastic dealy. Oh, well, we're real close. Sorry. A little plastic dealy that, uh, that goes over this here metal piece the problem is is you get a lot of build up on that metal piece and so you constantly have to uh oh i don't know if you can you can definitely see at the top but even at the bottom you can see that little bit of yellowing where uh, from my last cup of coffee but if you don't clean it if you make a couple cups of coffee that's where you steam the milk then the whole thing is like caked with like a milky powdery 
I mean, like a Cape Town milk substance, so that's no good. Um, and that's always bothered me about it, but it's just a lot of maintenance. And then it's also a one cup deal. Like you unscrew that top and uh, you unscrew that top in the back. And you fill it up and it's good for one cup of coffee. And you, I mean, it's a little bit extra water, but it's not enough for a whole other. How you doing? And then weeks ago, months ago, I'm not sure when, a while back, I saw this awesome, awesome machine called a Breville a Barista, Express. Barista Express or something. I just came across a random YouTube video. And I was like, that is awesome. And this girl was getting it. And she's like, my husband, you know, is going to be really mad at me when she finds out about this. I've already got like three other ones. But uh, I really want this one. And it's really awesome. And let's unboxing and let's make first cup of coffee for the first time. And I watched the whole thing and I was like, well, that is awesome. wonder how much I, I'd like one of those too. Check it out. Thinking it's going to be a couple hundred bucks, like my my my, my technoform, you know, three hundred bucks, something like that. Like seven hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars. I'm like, oh, well, that's something I'll never, I'll never bite the bullet on that. I can't justify spending, you know, seven hundred bucks on a freaking coffee machine. The old lady gets a call or gets a Facebook message, gets a Facebook post from one of her nurse practitioner friends, who uh, is a coffee connoisseur herself and apparently also has too many coffee machines and her husband is forcing her to get rid of one. And so what do you know? Ta-da! The Barista Express. You probably saw it earlier when I was, had the, but maybe you didn't identify that that was. So yeah, 700 on a machine, paid 300 bucks for it. I just uh, gave it a big wipe down. I mean, she's a clean person. It was per it looks clean, but you know, just in case of COVIDities. And, uh, in case of COVIDities. And she even gave me a jar with some beans in it. How nice. And she clearly is using it because it's still got beans in the hopper here. But it's got the automatic grinder and it's got the big carriage in the back that you fill with water. You just fill the thing with, oh, with the little, little, I don't know what that, I don't know what the number disc is for. Oh, it's a date. Oh, for a water filter. It's got a water filter and you set the date so then you know when to place your water filter. I'm not as worried about that. Oh, actually, it probably should be since I'm on well water and I have all that, uh, all that lime and calcium and stuff. And then you got the little, you got the little tamper that just magnets in here for your coffee tamping. And, uh, got your little milk, your little milk thing for your steamed how you doing zone. She's got a little build up on the end of her thing too. So see, it happens either way, but the fact is that, it, like when it's just plastic, it happens worse, I think. But you can see that our nurse practitioner friend, maybe you can or maybe you can't, there's a little bit of, a little bit of stuff on the bottom here. Heavenly shades and nights are falling. I don't know, can you see it? So I can't see what y'all are saying, but maybe you can. But anyway, I'll, uh, have no big whoop. That is to be expected. I guess it's par for the course. I guess it just it, that's that's what happens when you're messing with these types of machines. But yeah, it's got the special little temperature and it's got the automatic grinder and you got the grind setting over here and, uh, and the amount here. And uh, oh my goodness, filter size single double. I don't even know how to use it. I gotta watch a video. I have to watch. I have to watch. I don't even know how to do it. And I have to wash actually wash all the parts because you know I'm anal retentive. But soup's back on now. Soup's back on. And uh, and I got the cherries and the tequila. And I got my new coffee. Oh, my goodness. It's actually, I thought it was a lot bigger. So I'm pretty stoked. But now this. I, got, I need to find a home. I need to find a home for little Mr. Coffee, I do. Because, you know, she's still great. And honestly, I actually just bought this tamper after watching the video that showed me the other stuff. And I was like, oh, that's what I need for this thing is a tamper. I've never had a tamper for it. Never had a tamper to tamp down my grinds. And uh, and now I do. And it's, uh, so now that, that should probably find a home. Um, I would totally give it to somebody that would actually use it. But, I don't know. I guess maybe I'll, maybe I'll put it for sale. Know. I guess, I guess I, maybe I should save it. And if I have a shop, if I have a shop in, in a few years, I could always put it out there in the shop. And make me little coffees in the shop. Have a little mini fridge out there with some milk and stuff in it. Make me a little coffee. Coffees in the shop. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Yeah. Yeah, see? Save it. Alright, so now we're just waiting for our, for our beans to simmer. and Our beans. For our potatoes to simmer. We are not making chili. I don't know what I'm thinking. And, uh, 
Oh my goodness, I'm so stoked. I kind of got to find a spot for it now though. Okay, I started to get into her a little bit, like into that book, and uh, it's a lot more complicated than I thought. Like there's literal, yeah, there's a, and I think I'm actually missing. I think she forgot to give me my double cup, my double single wall cup. So I gotta, I gotta ask the old lady about that to text her, because, but, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's important, because I think if I'm just making a single, but I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's not, I don't know. Always order one, probably, but, yeah, so I set the old one back up, cleaned up the, cleaned up, well, I still gotta clean up all the actual stuff in dish parts, I just, you know, wiped it off with a Lysol rag. But yeah, I broke out the other one in case, uh, I'll probably watch videos on this one in the morning, on this one in the morning, while I'm, uh, while I'm drinking coffee from this one, I'll learn how to use this one. And uh, in the meantime, our soup is ready. I have not stopped all freaking day. I literally, I may have sat down for 35 minutes. The entire day. Since, whatever. I mean, I sat up this morning. So whatever. I woke up, woke up at 6 and I sat around for about 3 hours. And then after that, I haven't stopped moving all day. Okay. Okay. Last things we'll be needing. Three tablespoons of butter. I'm using salted, but only because I haven't put any salt in the soup. If you've already put salt and pepper in the soup, if you're one of those people that does that, uh, you might want to use unsalted butter. I'm just going to use salted butter and then I'll salt and pepper at the end to taste. I still haven't even had a chance to make a drink yet. Man, this is, this is tough stuff. Okay, get that on a medium heat. And then a quarter cup of flour. Quarter cup, that's one fourth cup of flour. And one cup heavy cream. I don't know why I always buy the big thing of heavy cream though I could probably just use the small one and it'd be better and I don't have any cilantro because you can't find cilantro in Georgia son of a gun I went out really went to the store to buy cherries and still didn't buy fresh chives man I'm a goof why would I do such a thing so I got a teaspoon of tarragon here a dried tarragon and I'm just crushing it up and I'm just melting the butter over medium heat. Melting the butter, melting the butter. When the butter, butter melts, we're going to whisk in this uh, flour. Cook that for a minute or two. And uh, then we're going to pour in our cream and our cilantro and tarragon. Except we don't have any cilantro. And we're going to mix that up. We're going to bring it to a boil just real quick. Stirring it constantly until thickened, which happens like that. It goes from almost thick, almost thick, almost thick to glue. So you've got to keep an eye on it. And when it's, the way it, when, it's, when it's right, as soon as it thickens up, you pour it into your how you doing zone. Pour it right into your soup. So our butter is just about melted. Let's see if we can get y'all some. I should have brought in my taller tripod. That would have been more beneficial. Butter is officially melted, so in goes our flour. Timer one minute. I mean, they really just want to make sure you incorporate it. You don't really have to cook it a minute. They just want to make sure all the butter is incorporated into all the. And then you can pour in your cream, and your spices, and then we're going to turn up the heat just for a minute. And go bring this up to a boil. You don't want it on a full high, like put it on about three quarters, 
of your burner because this is just a little bit of liquid and like I say it goes to glue so quick I am going to go ahead and take this opportunity to put a bunch of pepper in there though and just a little bit of salt but if you're cooking for people outside of your you know group or whatever probably better to leave it without salt and pepper and let them do that themselves but I know what me and the old lady like so Okay, it's thickening. and you'll feel it start to thicken up. And then when you when you do, like you're getting close. When you feel it start to thicken up, you're getting real close. And just be ready. You can always pick it up off the burner for a minute. It's still gonna have some heat in the pan. See, starting to starting to get there. Yeah. And so as soon as it really starts to thicken up, you can get it off the heat and really just whisk the f*** out of it. And then get it into your soup. Before it becomes glue. it can happen really quick and then just stir it in best you can just incorporate it a little bit it's going to chunk up and congeal a little bit but that's why you wanted to really stir it with the flour just so you don't have any chunks of flour all right so you stir it in your soup here and then pardon my pardon my big fat head then we're going to take our masher here, and you're going to puree about half the soup. I mean, you don't really need to puree it. You just, you're just going to take your, your potato masher, or I guess a big fork if you don't have this, or a big spoon or something, and just mash up some of the taids. You don't want a whole bunch of, I mean, I guess when you do it however you want. I guess if you want a bunch of crushed taids and more power to you. I like some big chunks. You can always crush it more later. But that is pretty much potato soup. Now I will, uh, I mean, it's ready to eat now, but I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on it. Let it simmer here for about 35 minutes or 25 minutes and just thicken up a little bit more and uh, while I clean up everything and make myself a drink and it's if you make got some I forgot to buy cheese too I got some old generic regular old craft sliced cheese but if you've got some gourmet cheeses and you make some delicious grilled cheese on the side nothing better than a grilled cheese and potato soup in my opinion but all right that's that
Life is hard, so we're leaving our way All these words I don't just say And nothing else matters Trust I see and I find in you Every day for something new Open my mind for a different Trusting who we are